it's the goodness of God that leads them to repentance. We need to show them the goodness of God. You see how he carried this one on his shoulders. This particular situation, he went out and received him and carried him. That means he supported him. He gave him support, love and kindness and, and tender mercies to bring him back into the sheepfold. I believe today, in today's time, the church has got this one. And they're doing this in many, many churches. I've seen it on TV. I've seen it in evangelism. And they're doing this part here. And this is for a particular situation in a particular group of people that don't know the tender mercies of God. However, we got two more. <laughs> There's two more totally different situations that the Lord is trying to show us here. Now this one we see He carried them. He supported them. And the next one is the lost coin. Verse 8. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, does not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she finds it. And when she has found it, she calls her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I have lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Now we see a common thread here. We see repentance. Now that's something I haven't seen too many people teach on these days. Repentance. They act like it's a dirty word. But repentance leads to restoration. Without repentance, there is no restoration. So if the Satan can get you to leave one thing out, just one thing out of the gospel, it can cause a whirlwind of lies to come around you. So without someone contrite in their heart and giving their all to God, saying, I'm sorry, and being remorseful for what they've been in, there is no restoration because pride blocks it. But we see how did he come to repentance. We see in the first one that the Lord carried. The Lord put on his shoulders and carried and supported. But this one, what did she do? She lit a candle and she swept the house. Well, Proverbs 6.23 says, For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Mm -hmm. Romans 7.7, 7, I had not known sin, but by the law, for I had not known lust, except the law has said, You shall not covet. So when you light that candle, that means you're showing them actually the law, the Word of God. You bring the Word of God with you, and you show them what is sin. This one has to be shown what is sin? They're lost. Praise God. But you've got to show them what it is to come back. How do we repent? What causes us to be a sinner? Some people don't know that they are a sinner. This one does not even know he's lost. The coin did not know it's lost. The coin that the woman lost is talking about. He didn't know it was lost. However, when you point the law, when you light the candle, it sweeps the house and convicts. And it says... Thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not have any graven images to honor thy mother and thy father. And then conviction sets in. They say, oh, I need to save you. I think I've broken a few of these. Yeah. Ooh, have no other gods before me. You show them the law. Well, you see, the candlelight is the law. And there's people that go out, and I've seen this done, evangelism, where they show the Ten Commandments to the people, and it convicts them, and some repent right there on the spot. And they say, I need help. I've broken these, and I'm going to hell without a savior. That's how he finds out. Yes, that's totally different from this first one. The first one he carried and supported. He didn't hit, no, hit him with no law. He didn't show him anything. There's a different reason why. But this one he did. You notice that. Light a candle, sweep the house, and then repentance came. Now the third one is the prodigal son. Now this one is lost and knows how to be found. But does he want it? There's a way to handle this. And Jesus specifically spends most of his time and effort describing the prodigal son. These other two were short. Yeah. One, you use the law of God. The law of God shows what we've done. Shows us that we're a sinner and we need a Savior. Another one, you support and carry with tender mercies and love. Which a lot of people do in families. Let's go, go out there and help them and, and support them and, and love them. And love them on in. But the prodigal son is totally different. And we see Jesus handles this totally different. Here we go. Verse 11, And he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of men said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods 
that falls to me. And he divided unto them his living. Now we see two me's in here. Give me what belongs to me. What does that sound like to you? That sounds like the ultimate sin of self, which is pride. Right. Yes. And Jesus don't run out to this one. Nope. He doesn't go out and carry him on his shoulders. He doesn't go out and watch this. We'll, we'll keep seeing this. Because the pride, the selfish sin of pride has to be broken. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but many times we think that we know better than God's Word. Yep. And we say, well, I know they're in that sin of pride. I know they think they're right in what they're doing. But I'm going to go to this first parable and I'm going to show them tender love and mercies and I'm going to support them in it. Mm -hmm. But we don't realize God is showing us this for a reason. Because these people have to be broken. And as long as you're giving your support, your money, and your tender love in what they're in, then they consider to think they're right in what they're in. You understand what I'm saying? You, we're going to keep on watching. Watch how this, this, this comes out of it. It doesn't mean that God doesn't love. It doesn't mean that He does not want them, but there is a way to reach every individual. I think we've been overstepping our bounds, thinking that we know better than the Bible. We've been stepping in a little bit of pride, Thinking that we can, well, I know more than God, and that just is not loving enough. God, matter of fact, I'm more loving than God because I'm going to do it my way. And we play the mother hen. Yeah. yeah, this United States has done the same thing. Well, we're going to have this health care bill, and we're going to hand out unemployment checks because they can't find out. We're just going to keep handing them out yeah. because they they have this entitlement program, and I deserve this to stay at home and be paid by the government. I deserve, I don't have to work. I should not have to work. I'm entitled to this. I was born here and I'm entitled to it. Let me tell you, God said He'd bless the work of your hands, not the work of your seat. we got to get up, praise God. And we got to put our hands to something. Jesus had to put His hands to something. Jesus was a carpenter from early age. He was not lazy. He was not slothful. And we don't, you know, we really deserve. Do y'all want to know what we really deserve? Y'all don't want to know what we really deserve. All you got to do is read the Bible to find out what a, a sinner really deserves. 